Hello friends, so glad to be back before you again as we share uh, God's Word. We're going to continue our devotionals and uh, we hope that you have been blessed and that you're growing through these daily devotionals. We're going to continue in the book of Acts chapter 9 verse 22 to 25, uh, but the questions posed, what what is it like if you accept Jesus Christ and you become his follower only to have your friends and your family don't like it? Saul's very familiar with that as he's turned his life around and he's going to anyone that would hear or listen about this good news that he's now sharing. Along the way, he has gained some enemies. Everyone has a need to feel important, especially liked. What about when you've turned your life around and you become a follower of Jesus Christ and your friends and your family don't like it? Well, that's the reality for a lot of people and that might be your reality. You may be ostracized, you may have even been blacklisted and you might have been even called a Jesus freak. On a personal note, I remember when I was in high school, uh, my friends knew that I was a Christian, uh, but yet still they gave me a, a, a tag name, a nickname, and they called me church boy. I wanted to fit in, I wanted to be like everybody else, but I had made a decision in the early part of my life that I wanted to please the Lord. David shares this comforting word when he's being slandered in Psalms uh, chapter 27, verse 10. He says these words, he says, when my father and my mother forsakes me, then the Lord will receive me. So it brings us to Acts chapter 22, Acts chapter 9, verse 22 to 25, it reads, Yet Saul grew more and more powerful, and he baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him, but his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. Here you see Saul now preaching the gospel to his former buddies that he used to rub shoulders with. He could have easily been intimidated standing before them preaching the good news. What they remembered about Saul was that he was their champion. He was the person that ran with their message. And that message was against Jesus. It was against the gospel. They didn't believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And now here you have Saul bringing this news that he is the Messiah. Saul spoke with boldness. Saul spoke with authority. He had to hold a Holy Spirit that was in him, that was helping him as he was convincing them that Jesus was the true Messiah. There's an old saying, the truth hurts. And so the truth hurt as these Jews, these leaders heard Saul but they still went after him. Saul is now viewed as a traitor to certain Jews. He's viewed as a person that has flipped. At times in our personal lives as a Christian, our faith is being tested as we follow Jesus. But Jesus gives us these words and reminds us through his words that the world will hate us just like how they hated him. Jesus also tells us to take up our cross and to follow him. 
And Jesus says that when we partake in slander, when we're been taken advantage of as, as a Christian, Jesus said, you are taking part in my suffering. But Jesus also tells us that there are more benefits than risk when we follow him. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 through 12, Jesus says these words. He says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile that slander and persecute you and say all evil against you falsely for my sake. He goes and says, rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted the prophets who were before you. Saul goes on to say in other chapters that his light affliction is only but for a moment. And it doesn't compare to the reward, his eternal reward that awaits him. You might feel lonely, you might feel isolated, you might even be the only one in your family that is now a follower of Jesus Christ. But God reminds us over and over again that he is with us, he is with you, you are not alone. God will position you by connecting you with other believers where you can share your story and also to grow. I'm thinking about two young men in the Bible uh, named David and Joseph. They were misfits in their family. Uh, their family looked at them as being less than. They looked at them as being too small, unimportant, but yet still God used these two young men to save their family from destruction and also a nation. You can be that person that will save individuals, whether at your workplace, whether at school, whether your neighbor or your community. We, you, we all are called by God to be his ambassadors, to perform his will in us and through us. One of the key points I believe that we can take away from this lesson today is that we can be lifeliners to the lost, even our very friends and our very families. God can use us and will use us if we avail ourselves that we can be life changers in someone's life. So don't give up on your family. Don't give up on your friends. Don't give up on your community. God can and will use you for his glory.